Namaste and hello everyone. There has been a lot of interest around India's 10 billion dollar incentive package to create a semiconductor ecosystem. You might have seen in Swarajya had presented a table which summarizes the four different types of initiatives that India is targeting. Their eligibility criteria, deadlines for application, as well as the physical support that the government has promised. In particular, let us look at the silicon CMOS fabs for which the government is hoping to have at least two of them take off soon. For the first time, thanks to Next Orbit Ventures, who had done a thorough study in association with Frost and Sullivan, we present to you a demand chart for analog memory and logic chips that India will need by year 2025. As you can see in the chart, there are about 36 fab worth of demand that India is going to have, adding up to an opportunity of investment more than $150 billion if all of India's chip demands are to be done domestically. The value of these chips as per this chart adds up to about $52 billion. Is this realistic? So let's look at it from a different angle. The government of India had recently brought out a roadmap targeting $300 billion of electronic manufacturing domestically by year 2026. Recent studies have shown that electronic systems now have about one third of them as semiconductors. But even by a conservative estimate, to produce $300 billion worth of electronics in India, you will easily need at least one fifth of them as semiconductors, which means about $60 billion or maybe $70 billion worth of chip. Most likely something like $12 billion worth of analog chips, $18 billion worth of uh, memory chips and $30 to $40 billion worth of logic chips. So how is India going to achieve all of this? or at least make a beginning. There are multiple possible business models that could happen for a fab in India. For example, an MNC could have a fully owned fab in India or there could be a joint venture with an Indian business partner or they could do a transfer of technology or license for a cost to a particular Indian business group who is willing to set up and run a fab. Now, if you look at the demand chart, the 22 and the 28 nanometer segment has demand both in the memory and in the logic. However, the number of global players that have the capability to do this are limited. Let us take a quick look at each of those. TSMC, the topmost, of course, has the capability and variety of offerings in these technology nodes. However, some reports recently have shown that TSMC usually prefer a fully owned fab when it does an overseas project and they've already doing one in US, is being invited into multiple countries including the European Union countries and we'll have to wait and see if with all their busy schedule they'll have to time and the intent to look at India as a possible location. Some say that maybe in a, in a future uh, occasion, maybe with the free trade agreement kind of arrangement happening between India and Taiwan, that's when TSMC might be interested. Let's look at Samsung. It's a cash rich company. It is expected to make big investments in the near future. However, that's mostly to compete with TSMC in the most advanced nodes. As far as mature nodes go, which let's say the 22 and the 28 nanometer fall into, it's doubtful whether Samsung will go for a completely new fab or prefer some acquisitions which it is said to be planning. Intel recently has gotten into or wants to get into contract chip manufacturing or the foundry service. Yet again, it's not clear if they will be interested in mature node technologies or their focus is also going to be on advanced technology nodes. Global foundries is a possibility. It already has an advantage that it is used to a global culture having fabs in US, Singapore, Germany, 
as well as a support center in India where engineers do support a lot of fab related operations, modeling, characterization and so on. However, it is a company which just had an IPO, is not that cash rich and is still probably waiting to see how some of those US incentives work out for its already in plan expansion of a fab in US. That possibly leaves Taiwanese UMC as another possibility but before I talk about that let's look at one of the interviews that I had done with Next Orbit Ventures Ajay Jalan whose group is ready to propose a 65 nanometer analog fab in later media it was confirmed to be tower semiconductors as a partner there's one more point that Ajay had mentioned in the interview that was published in Swarajya in July of last year that one of the top three foundries has told the group that you first start off with an analog fab and then at a later stage we will come for a 28 or whichever technology node makes sense logic fab in all possibilities that is UMC so what is the net of all of this as of now 14th of February is the deadline for application for the silicon CMOS fabs. The government might extend it or open it in another window if it possibly doesn't find some of the big or the top five players applying. However, it might be prudent and practical for the government to go ahead and look at the applications that it is going to receive before the deadline. Say for example, the tower semiconductors proposal. And as long as it meets the eligibility criteria, approve it, get it to the ground breaking and that might be an encouragement for more fabs to come in future. Let us look forward to more news in this aspect in the coming weeks or months. Thank you and Jai Hind.